All right, so today uh, we are going to talk about how energy flows in an ecosystem. So we're going to look at like food chains and food webs and then ecological pyramids today. So to start, I just want to start by talking about how organisms get their energy. So uh, one way organisms get their energy is that they make it on their own. So we call those autotrophs. So they usually get their energy from sunlight uh, via photosynthesis or some bacteria. They can use inorganic substances such as H2S to make energy. So what about the word autotroph? Can you use to help you remember that autotrophs make their own energy? Good, auto. Think it's like automatic, they make it on their own. Another way organisms get their energy is by consuming another organism. Uh, so those are called heterotrophs. So you have to get your energy by eating. That would be like you and me. Okay, you got to eat to get your energy. Um, because they have to consume food, they're also called consumers. Now, all heterotrophs are equal. Okay, so there are different ways to get energy. So for this slide, you only need to write down the types of heterotrophs that you don't automatically know, because some of these might already be familiar to you. Okay. Um, so we have herbivores. Herbivores are plant eaters only. Okay. Carnivores, they have to eat other heterotrophs. These are our meat eaters. Okay. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Detritivores, they eat fragments of dead matter in an ecosystem. An example of this would be a worm. And then we have decomposers. They release digestive enzymes and then those help uh, break down dead organisms. So examples of those would be fungi and bacteria. So again, on this slide, you only need to write down the ones that you don't know. So probably for sure the detritivore and the decomposer, and then maybe herbivores, conivores, and omnivores, depending on how comfortable you are with those terms. And which of those are you? Omnivore. Okay. Most likely, um, you're an omnivore, unless you're vegan. All right, so now we're going to look at um, how do we model how energy flows throughout an ecosystem. So we're going to look at food chains and food webs. We'll also look at an ecological pyramid. Before we look at those, I just want to define a few terms. So the first one is trophic level. A trophic level is just describing each step in a food chain or a food web or the pyramid. And then no matter uh, what kind of diagram we're looking at, the autotrophs are always going to be in that first trophic level. Um, and that's because they're the ones that produce energy on their own. So they don't have to eat anything for energy. They make it. So they're always going to be that first trophic level. And then organisms are always going to get their energy from the level directly below them. And on the next few slides, we'll look at different diagrams, and I'll make sure this makes sense to you. So here's a picture of the food chain. This is probably the most familiar one. We've seen food chains before. Uh, food chains are simple models, and they just show how energy flows in an ecosystem. So if we look at the one on the right, here's like a marine food chain. So at the bottom, these are our autotrophs, the ones that produce their own energy. So maybe like a phytoplankton. Uh, then right above it, this is what would eat that. Okay, so like the shrimp would eat the phytoplankton. Then the shrimp gets eaten by the small fish or the crab. The crab gets eaten by the medium fish. That gets eaten by the dolphin. And then that gets eaten by the shark. Okay, uh, the same, we have terrestrial food chain. So we have grass and a flower at the bottom. Um, then like a bumblebee. Okay. All right, so then the bumblebee uh, gets eaten by like the wasp or the beetle. Those get eaten by the frog, which gets eaten by the snake, and that gets eaten by the hawk. Now, the downfall or, like, the disadvantage of a food chain is they're super simple. And do you think it's this simple in nature? Okay, so it's a little bit oversimplified. Um, what I mean by that is, like, if we have this frog here, the frog is going to eat more than just, like, a wasp or a beetle. And other predators are going to eat the frog than just the snake. Okay, so food chains are just a little bit too simple. So a better diagram is going to be a food web. So food webs are a little bit more complex. 
Um, they show like these interconnected relationships among food and how energy flows within an ecosystem. So if you take a look at the picture up here, this shows like multiple producers. So it shows phytoplankton, submerged aquatic vegetation, and then just like terrestrial vegetation. Then it shows um, a bunch of herbivores that are going to eat those. Okay, it shows multiple um, primary consumers and the multiple secondary consumers and multiple tertiary consumers. So food webs, they just include more organisms in that ecosystem. Okay, so they're maybe like a more realistic representation of how energy gets passed through an ecosystem. All right, and then our third type of diagram, it's called an ecological pyramid. Uh, you might see it as like a biological pyramid or an energy pyramid. Uh, these ones show a couple things. So one, they just show the relative amount of energy in an ecosystem. Uh, they show something called biomass, which if you break apart the word biomass, what does bio mean? Okay, life. life, and then mass, um, it's like how much matter you have, right? So biomass is just the total mass of like living matter at that trophic level. And then they also show the number of organisms in each level. So on this slide, uh, just write down like what is in an ecological pyramid. And then the next slide, I have a larger picture and we're gonna draw a pyramid and just label it. Okay, so just know next slide, we're gonna label the picture. All right, so this slide, I just have like a blown up ecological pyramid. Um, go ahead and copy that in your notes. And then I just want you to label, uh, like, what's the name of, like, the trophic level. Okay, so at the bottom, uh, these are the producers. Okay. So these are your autotrophs. They're the ones that produce the energy. The next level are the herbivores. So these are the ones that eat the autotrophs. Then we have carnivores. So they're going to eat the herbivores. Uh, and this is one, we have secondary carnivores. So they're going to eat our first layer of carnivores and then we have our apex predator that are going to eat those secondary carnivores in addition to the name it shows the relative amounts of energy i know you can't see it so i'm going to write it in my own pen so at the producer level uh these are the ones that actually make the energy okay so they're going to have a hundred percent of the energy they make if an herbivore eats a producer it only gets 10% of that energy. So what I mean by that is, let's say a phytoplankton makes 100 calories of energy. What's 10% of 100? 10. So that means the herbivore that's going to eat that phytoplankton is only going to get 10 of those calories. Uh, carnivores, they would end up with 1%. The secondary carnivore ends up with 0.1%, and then that apex predator ends up with 0.01%. So in addition to names, make sure you get these percents on your pyramid as well. All right, so if you take a look at the pyramid and take a look at the percents up there, do you see any pattern in those numbers? Okay. So you move the decimal over what direction? Okay, left, how many places? One. One, which means every time you go up a level, it's only 10% of the level below it, right? So um, this is only 10% from this level. This is 10% of the previous level. This is 10% and that's 10%. So that brings us to the 10% rule. Uh, so when energy in an ecosystem is passed from one trophic level to the next, only 10% of that energy gets passed on. What's 100 minus 10? 90. So that means 90% of the energy uh, doesn't make it to the next trophic level. So what do you think happens to it? Where do you think it goes? Not bacteria. It does, it gets lost um, as heat. So it gets converted to heat energy.